Hello and welcome back to Winter's Tales. My name is AJ Winters and tonight we pull away from the unmarked and explore another chapter and another assortment of characters that have unexpectedly been thrown into the machinations of the Chronicles of Aelwyn, as well as the Blue Syndicate's plans, but more on that later. First, I should introduce you to these incredible players. We have Nicholas Allen. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Mickey Gideon. Hi. <laughs> Dawson. Bonjour. <laughs> and we have Brittany Fenwick. Hey. Oh. How are we feeling tonight, team? Good. Splendid. Nervous. Splendid. Oh. Well, to ease the nerves a little bit, uh, we have some presents oh. for you. Not only have you been gifted with new campaign journals from the lovely Sphinx Stationery for your characters of this campaign, but we also have some dice delivered from the Ravens Ridge Emporium. So, Nick, could you please read the little note that the Ravens have sent to us? Oh, I've gone straight back into high school where the teacher asks you to read. <laughs> but, oh, it's so pretty. I don't want to break it. Please do read the note. Is, I'm excited. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> The Raven Ridge. The other, the other the, side. <laughs> it's a strong start, <laughs> gang. <laughs> Dearest Coa team, the sweet, silly, sassy ravens have gathered these gifts for you. My shinies provide you much luck during your adventures. The ravens will always be with you. Just look to the trees. Good luck. Love the Raven's Ridge Emporium. <gasps> for yourself. <gasps> <laughs> oh, good dice! Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's so cool. For Dawson, I hope I've gotten this in the right order. Oh, wow. And for Brett. I'll just put my other set of dice away then. Ooh, they're amazing. These are perfect. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. We must christen them. Oh, they're so cool. So they are based off your characters. I, yeah. 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 Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> We're getting edgy. There's little cogs inside them. Uh-huh. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh my gosh. I've got some. I've got some. Oh, that's cool. That's so amazing. Oh my god, this is so cool. All right, come on, first roll, baby. Come on. Right. My character <laughs> dies. Oh, I can do one. One? <laughs> oh, we're getting the ones out of the way. That's a, it's 12. That's still good. I'm saving mine because if I roll a 20, I, I want that to get is anyone? Yes. Is anyone edgy? Is it what is what char is what character edgy? Definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that your dice match your outfit. I know! What That's perfect. So, in that case, with all the gifts given, I think it's time that I set the stage. In the vast continent of Aelwyn, a land long changed since the War of the Gods, where the greed of mortal creatures forced the hands of the heavens to siphon all arcane from the land. Though something that big is sure to leave its mark, and nothing is ever simple. The lands were forever changed from this brink of collapse, cities burnt, histories lost, and the spilt remains from the Vale of the Gods, feeding an ever-growing desperation for magic to one day return. Over time, many a mortal has risen, forged or tapped into magic in hopes of changing their circumstances, or in search of power. And here, in the year 4477, one such endeavor has already begun. With the pieces already in place, the game has been set, but the outcome is still yet to be written. So with that, are we ready? Oh, yeah. Yes! yes. <laughs> yeah. Roll that intro.
With the unmarked six somewhere out at sea or scattered across the continent, the ever unfolding chapters of this tale turn their sights to another path yet woven. Deep within the lost city, known for its shady dealings, scandals, and sin, we lend our voices to the Chronicles of Aelwyn. Beyond the veiled tapestry district and further into the darker and dangerous caverns of the lost city of Nauvoo, further still into the trenches where forgotten things are rarely found and where forgotten people are often not. We find a handful of prisoners locked behind a city in bars, fused with arcane suppressant pressurization, some shackled by one ankle to the blackened rock walls, and others free to move around. In this place where sunlight does not touch, it's hard to tell the time of day, or even how many days have passed since you arrived. Only the irregular, though predictable for those that have been there long enough, rotation of assholes that come and go calling themselves guards. Whenever a new prisoner arrives, suddenly the more sadistic and bad-tempered guards seem to take up shift for six to ten hours rotations. Again, it's very hard to tell time. Today, however, something is different. It's unnoticeable at first, but when everyone's stomachs start to rumble more than usual, and with the lack of rations anyway, rumbling is already a consistent part of the soundscape down here. That and the screams of those being tortured for information. This cacophony of empty bellies is like a storm has hit. There are no guards around. And the one or two that have come through the corridor, well, they've been preoccupied or rushed. Something is happening. And for those that have been waiting for any kind of moment to attempt an escape, this might be it. We shall begin with the most fresh-faced of the group currently stirring in this hellhole, a Kalor of Anthemae, with dark mahogany skin, orange hair, amber-colored eyes, and what used to be bright red flowers down their neck, now a wilted maroon frill. Juby. You have been here for four days, you think. Just judging by how your body is responding to the lack of sunlight. Food is mostly irrelevant to you when the water here gives you that minerals and iron flavoring. As a plant, you could have been fine, but being underground without a way to photosynthesize, well, it's making you very lethargic. How do you feel in this moment right now? <sighs> I'm so tired. Ugh, so <laughs> sleepy. Uh, Juby thinks they should maybe let the gods know that they could use some sunlight. Mm. I'm sure they'll be reasonable. They look really nice and all. Okay. Uh. Sure. Um, you look around you. You are in an individual uh, cell and you are not shackled to the wall, whereas some of the others that are in this space are. To truly understand what this is like for you, we're going to cast our minds back a little to a moment in time that probably wasn't that long ago when you made a drastic choice for yourself. Let's set the scene together. You are in the forests of Kylandry, this beautiful tropical region full of beauty, but also immense danger. You're part of a tribe there and you are very close to your name day. How do you feel? Terrified. It's scary. Um, pretty soon I turn 20, I pick my name, I pick my life path, and that's it. That's me selected. I've made my big decision. And I, I don't know what to call myself. And I was thinking, like, maybe being a seeker would be cool, but I've never even left the village. I don't have any stories. Like, I've done some cool things on my seat. Like, I've seen some nice birds, a lot of pretty flowers. You know, I've made friends with everyone in the village, but I don't even know what a city is like outside of what I've heard in the stories. That's so true. Yeah. You get this impulsive thought cross your mind. Maybe you should check out a city. And what, if anything, if that could teach you more about yourself, then maybe you make a logical decision, a logical choice for the rest of your life. And you see a moment 
when everyone is quiet in the dead of night, all you could slink away. I feel it's good to go and experience everything for myself. I love everyone here, but really it's for the greater good. I'd leave a little note, just a little carving on a piece of bark. Mm -hmm. Just as you know, I should tell them face to face, but it's gonna be hard enough as it is. And you know, I don't wanna see anyone sad. Oh. So it'll be fine. There's so many stories of people that go out, have a few adventures, come back with great stories. I'll be better for it. They'll be better for it, right? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Leave the note and slink away with nothing but my trusty piccolo. Okay. <gasps> you wander the forests of Kylandry for a good, decent couple of days. And in that, the plants seem to sort of change the further south you travel. Things don't look as familiar, and turns that you take, you think you remember them. You think you remember your way back to the village. Please roll me a survival check. First roll. I think that's, is that a math one? <laughs> <laughs> it's a seven, it's a seven, it's a seven, it's a seven, it's a nine. Nine, okay. Uh, so Juby, since you haven't trekked that far outside of the tribe, um, outside of these forests in general, it's very likely that you would maybe be unlikely to return to your tribe that easily, but on the plus side, you have made your way to the river city. You enter into this gigantic city that looks like what you imagined castles would be, made of completely white stone. These levels where flowing water just fills into these basins, though you're not allowed to bathe in them. You have been told that. <laughs> Colors, smells, and sights that you've never seen before, but so many people, and so many people who aren't ethered. You spend your afternoon walking around, but you learn that there is something called tetra, or coin, that you need to exchange in order to get food. Mm. You don't have tetra or coin, so what do you plan on doing? Well, I've asked a lot of people things like what they eat, what they like to do, and eventually most of them say to go away. So I go to someone that I've never talked to, just standing on the street, and walk up to them, and I'm just going to ask them, well, what do you do to get Tetra? Oh, uh, well, I have a job. A job? Yeah, um, I, I work in the fisher village. Fishing? Uh, what do you do there? And I, I fish. Fish, <laughs> okay. If I went there and fished, could I get Tetra? Uh, maybe. Do you have any other skills? I can play this, and I play a little diddly for them. Please roll me a performance check. 17 plus 5, 22. Perfect. Uh, as Juby is known to do, you begin to attract a crowd. Mm -hmm. Playing a little uh, bit of your piccolo, immediately people start to walk closer. And not only that, they begin to throw Tetra at you. Uh, well, not directly at you, but sort of in front of you. And you begin to collect your first coin, your first bundle of coins. But you also notice that there are a few people on the outskirts of the crowd that don't particularly look happy listening to your music, which is quite strange because that's never happened before. Mm. You make a note of it, but it doesn't really seem to bother you. And eventually the crowd disappears over time and you have yourself a few coins to spend. Lovely. What would you like to spend your first coin on? I'll give half of it to the fisherman who gave me the idea because it's only fair. <gasps> oh, thank you. Uh, whoa. <laughs> That's like half my week's salary. Whoa, okay. Do you want a drink? Uh, yes, I'd love a drink. He leads you to the nearest tavern and he hands you a giant pail. I 
being the first time I've ever experienced ale. I think this water's a bit muddy, but that means it's usually full of nutrients, and I try to consume it. Perfect. You do consume it, <laughs> uh, but I would mm-hmm. like you to roll me a constitution saving throw, please. Let's see how well you consume it. <laughs> Four minus one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> That went exactly how I expected it to. Um, (laughs) Juby, not only is this your first time drinking ale, but you're also a very lean plant person. So you sort of flood your entire system with alcohol, which plants are known to be uh, susceptible to. You get drunk really quickly. And the rest of the evening is a bit of a blur to you. Is there anything that you think stands out to you from this evening that you did whilst intoxicated? I think like even while intoxicated, I made sure not to tell anyone I was an ethid because I was told you don't reveal that to anyone. Mm-hmm. And I was very good that every time I like made a mess, I instantly pressed digitation to clean. <laughs> every time. This is too awesome. I yeah. also love that if I pressed a digitation again, you were letting people know your ethid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh there are patches of your memory that you would recall, or at least especially in the last four days, whilst you've been in this dark and dreary place, mm-hmm. you try and think back on. But by the time your vision blurred and went dark, one of the faces that faced you was the same grumpy face that watched you play your music. You haven't seen the face since, but you have all the confidence in the world that they just found your music annoying and locked you up for it. They must really not like that song. Yeah. (laughs) You might even still believe that you're in the River City, to be honest, unless you've had a conversation with any of your cellmates. Uh, no, a lot of like, how are you guys? What's, going on? What's on your mind? Perfect. Uh, <laughs> when you first it feels like that sometimes too. When you first got brought in, you were put next to a bloodied, uh, almost corpse of a person. Mm-hmm. You didn't really get that much of a conversation with them. A couple of groans until they actually got lifted and pulled out of the cell that you were in again. Mm-hmm. You never saw them again, and you're you're pretty sure they're they're dead. Um, uh, but they did let you know that this isn't the River City. So that's all you know at this point in time. And we jump back to this present moment of you very sleepy, very lethargic, um, standing up in your cell to see the silence but almost uneery chaos bubbling in the background. What would you like to do? Are there people around that I can talk to? There are people around that you can talk to. One such person. Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> Close by to you, almost in the cell next to you, one over so you can't touch the person, uh, is the person who got here before you, or at least the person that got here before you that's still alive. Mm-hmm. Nicholas, mm-hmm. please describe for us, because I don't think I can capture Nathariel the way that you can. Uh, understandable. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nathariel, a younger man, um, Damon, pointy ears, very uh, fine, uh, thin features, pale Caucasian skin, um, very neat blonde hair even despite the fact that he's been in a prison cell um not wearing his armor not wearing his armor so uh has still made a very large effort to keep himself as clean as possible given the circumstances um probably very hungry and very uh dehydrated um has kept himself like a little more quiet recently but uh, you've probably heard um, like hums or preaches or little like songs every now and then from the cell. Um, maybe pulling themselves up a little bit and like like holding on to the bars and being like, "Hello, is food coming? So I don't belong here." <laughs> Hello. Absolutely brilliant. Well, with this. A sparkly blue-eyed 
the the sparkliest. <laughs> this beautiful young man that is in this cell. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a little flashback to see how you ended up here. <laughs> in the province of Theron, a young Athariel, not long ago, I would say maybe two or three weeks ago from this moment in time with the others, you were attending to the monastery. Mm -hmm. Please describe to me what your daily duties would be like. Well, it would differ, but I think today it's um, helping those less fortunate that come in, um, providing them with food and teachings of the gods, um, attending to the regular workers that work here, uh, obviously uh, providing my own prayer to the gods, which would you know, roughly take a, a couple of hours at least, cleaning where I can, doing everything I can in, in service of, um, you know, the holy place where I, I work. Brilliant. And by the end of that evening, you return to your family, your family stead, uh, which is not the humble makings of many a Crestelian citizen, but the manor mm. of the Lord and Lady of Theron, the House Orion. You return for supper that is decadently laid out by the people that work in the manor, a long table full of food and plenty of mead. And your mother and father greet you, but your father seems distantly preoccupied, not cold towards you, just lost in thought, per se. Please roll me an insight check. You does. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Love those reactions. <laughs> well, so, 12. 12. Okay, not high okay. enough to sort of get a read on your father at this point in time, but your mother, as loving as she is, guides you to your seat, kisses you on the forehead, and always, mother, as per <laughs> usual, uh, calls you her special boy. Oh, I am. <laughs> oh, and you spent a good meal together. But again, your father seems distracted. And by the end of the meal, he puts his mead mug down a little too hard. It sort of makes a loud clang and your younger sister jumps slightly from the opposite side of the table. You've been called upon, Nathariel. Uh, this is a mission that you should take as you are coming of age becoming a man, you should take this mission from the gods. I would not refuse such an opportunity, um, Father. Um, who will attend to my obligations? I... Well, uh, the priests from the monastery, most likely, but this, this comes directly from the high priest, from the queen herself. Oh. As you know, Natreva is a sinful place. Very bad. Ever yeah. since the War of the Gods, we know that they are nothing but corrupt. Very corrupt, Father. So, the High Priest has asked for you to travel to the lost city of Naboo and speak on behalf of Crestfell to negate the scandalous behavior that goes on there. It would be my honor. How soon can I leave? You set off in the morning. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. I, I'll make you proud. Roll me another insight check. <laughs> it's what? <worse. laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Seven. For everyone but Nathariel, <laughs> <laughs> the look that crosses his father's face is one of guilt. But unknown to you, you spend the evening proud of yourself that you are going on a mission from the Queen herself mm. to the Lost City of Naboo. Tell me, how do you spend that eve and what do you pack for the road the next day? It's a um, it's a big event, so I'll pack my um, sort of uh, deluxe scriptures in, in, <laughs> best, in best condition I can to spread the word. Maybe, maybe a dagger, 
I, you know, it's not, it's not the way of a, a holy man, but I am going to a very sinful place. So if I need to defend myself, I know how. Um, probably getting in a last little moment with my little sister, Esther, just, you know, letting her know that I love her and um, maybe playing her favorite game. What is her favorite game? Um, it's, it's cops and robbers. I, I, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> I, it's, I'm trying to, I, I'm hoping she's, she's going to outgrow it, but I, you know. Thieves and, thieves and guards? <laughs> thieves and guards. It is thieves and guards. <laughs> I don't like to play that in the prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, you spend it with Esther, and the next morning you set out at first dawn, and you travel uh, north towards Matreva. The reality of this situation hits you when you reach the edge of Crestfell, and what faces you is the barren, blackened sands of the desert region, as if... Where the siphoning took place and magic was taken away from Aeolin, there is a circle from the sands onwards. Mm. You step forth. I'll hold a little letter to Ruby that I didn't have the courage to leave behind. So I'll hold that close and then put it in my bag and walk forward. Would you like to tell us what the letter says or would you like to leave that for a later moment? I, I'd like to leave it for a later <laughs> moment. Not a problem. Then I will leave that. Is this going to be like the wholesome side of the table? Like, <laughs> the whole, I don't know what your character's <laughs> like but I'm like, hmm. I love them so much. You have been given a peddler which is a giant sand bird with webbed feet that can run quickly across the desert sands. Yes. Oh. You hop aboard the large plumage, sort of covering your legs and your armor that is there, and you make your way to the giant chasm where the lost city of Naboo is buried. What did you do the first day that you got to the lost city of Naboo? Uh, very eagerly, probably uh, set up a stand, invited people to come <laughs> here, mm -hmm. uh, the word... Um, maybe uh, attended <laughs> to what I perceived as less fortunate. They might have been completely fine. Um, Perception check. <laughs> <laughs> That's a one. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, the less fortunate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I say with my sparkling clean armor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brilliant. You did not last more than a few hours in the lost city of Naboo before you immediately got manhandled by what? some uh. Traven, um, which are Ascidian rock people, much taller and much stronger than you. You were hustled into the Veiled Tapestry District, an area that you vowed never to step into because of the sin there. And further, deeper down into this cell. What? How? How barbaric! I, there's, <laughs> there must be some mistake. Uh, hello, hello. There's no mistake. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> you are immediately shut into this cell. Uh, you are stripped of your armor, down to <gasps> whatever you were wearing on the underneath it. You, the dagger was taken from you that you never got the chance to use, and you are shackled with one ankle to the wall. And you can feel immediately as you are that it pushes the connection that you have to the gods almost internal. Mm -hmm. Like it's closer to your heart, but it feels somewhat painful. For the time that I have been here, I have uh, probably repeated that I'm not meant to be here. This is not my purpose. This is a mistake. Um, I am destined for bigger, better things than this. You've got the wrong man. And just repeat it. Yeah. There was a few people in these cells that have been tortured for information that at night you can hear the screams of in the other room. Off down the hallway, the door in and the door out. The room that you came through, a barren place with weapons across the wall and one single chair. 
none of those people are still in these cells with you, but you have never been taken to that room. You have just been locked up and left. You have no idea what that means, but you think that it confirms your suspicions that you're not meant to be here. You don't have information for these people, so whoever they are, they've got the wrong man. You look to a, an Avanthame, a Kalor Avanthame, one that is not uh, common in Crestfell, uh, very summery colors rather than the cooler wintry colors of a, of a winter Avanthame. They are looking at you, holding a pickle. They were allowed to keep their stuff. You got everything taken from you. Hey. <laughs> How did you get that? I came with it. They took my things. I'm really sorry about that. I heard you say you're not meant to be here. I'm not meant to be here. A lot of people have said that. I think the guards are really bad at their job. <laughs> I think that is a fair assessment. <laughs> How are you holding up? Not well. Yeah. Um, you're different. Um, thank you. My family always said I was special. <laughs> they said that of everyone, but it's true, we're all special. I'm especially special. What's your name? Uh, Nathario. Pleasure, Nathario. I'm Juby. Nice to meet you, Juby. Nice to meet you too, you know. It'd be nice if it was somebody with more sun. Yeah. <laughs> You have the homeland saying rolling around in your head that the sun shines down on Crestfell as Judy says that. The sun does not shine here. Yes. Um. I don't suppose you know if they ever let us out. Oh, I, I'm, I'm going to be released. Soon, likely, hopefully. That's nice. Could you ask them to let me go too, please? Uh, if that is your path, then of course. Thank you. We cut across to the other side. Oh no. Across the darkened hallway. Oh. The two of you in your own individual cells with a shackle on your ankles. You hear this conversation on the other side about being released, about one day getting out. And knowing how long the two of you have been here doesn't seem that likely. How long have I been there for? You have been in their cell for over three months, mm -hmm. as far as you can tell. Oh, true, time. Time. It's an illusion. That is over 145 days in Aelwyn. And you are similar in time, though slightly less. So we're going to start with yourself, Lunella, a daemon with very pale skin and in certain lights, slightly lavender, pointed ears as many a daemon is, long dark black hair and glowing green eyes. You listen to this conversation on the other side. Do you react? Okay, then for the purposes of getting to know Lunella, we're going to take a dive into your past. Around two and a half months ago, you sat in a very prestigious position in your chambers amongst many a tome and many a book studying magic and history that was long forgotten. Being here in the lost city of Naboo was incredible. Being able to learn things from the great city of Elzevar itself, things that were destroyed after the War of the Gods, you got to hold and translate. The day that you stumbled upon certain information, what happened that morning? What was your day like? Um she would have just followed a very set routine. So first thing in the morning, get up, pour over the things that probably that she summarized from her learning the day before, just to like lock it in. And then she'd go down for, for or go out to, to eat and then back to books. Perfect. 
When you came back after your lunch, uh, a very minimalist and not very filling meal, but good enough for you, who doesn't eat very much in general, when you returned to the research centre that is being governed by the Astral, you stumbled upon a map that was traced over with a rune. A rune that you have partly been able to decipher for the Astral. And you notice something particular. That one of the points on this rune where a pillar would be, a small pillar, you see the symbol for sea gem. And something clicks in your mind in this moment that if this rune was to cover the map of Aeolin, that that pillar of sea gem would need to be the size of a great tower. That does not exist in this world. Sea gem comes in a form of small little spheres. They would need to create that pillar. And the only way to do that would be to gather the souls of thousands of people. Please describe to me in this moment of that clicking into place for you of all the research you have done for years. What happened? Um, there's like this flurry of confusion because no, that she has to be wrong, but she's never wrong. Um, that this can't be right. And then there's the panic of surely they don't realise what we need to do. So I need to find whoever it is that is like my direct mentor or superior. Like they, they need to know right now. Um, and then there'd probably be like a tinge of a moment of guilt that would be squashed really quickly. Like, no, surely they don't know because I, no, 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 no. This is fine. This is a mistake. It's not going to happen. And then she's going to run and try and find do you go and find Inez your mother figure for a lack of a better word she greets you as she often does with a hug and a kiss on the cheek more affectionate than most people in your life and you sit with her as you drink tea and you think of how fickle the moment was that you asked about this. Questions aren't bad. Not here. But this one potentially was. Because the moment that you asked whether thousands of people were going to die, Inez, unblinking, answered, of course. your entire world began to shatter around you as you realize that what you've been working for maybe hasn't been the right thing. Yes, bringing magic back to Aeolin is a just cause, but not like this. So you fought back. What was the first thing you attempted to do to stop this? Um, the second that it like clicked for her, that this was gonna happen. She's any anywhere, like all of her research, everything, she's just gonna go and try and burn it straight away, set it all on fire. You lit the research center aflame. Countless of ancient tomes went up in fire. And immediately you were restrained and magic was pressurized to hold itself within you. You could not tap into it. And you came face to face with the Astral himself. And he looked you deep in the eyes and said not a single word to you. Only looked at you with disappointment. And you were taken to this cell in Shackle to the Wall like you meant nothing because you betrayed your you betrayed the astral 
the father. And when you got there, and when yourself, Oscar, when you saw this young, barely 20-year-old girl be brought into the salvage room to the wall, she never spoke. Only once, when a certain member of your family, your roommate, your sister, visited you and pleaded with you to see your son, Valentine. She looked at you and you knew that she had believed every single word the way that you had on your strong. Come off it. Are you not going to talk to me? We're bringing magic back to Aeolwen. What do you not understand about that? Yeah, a, a few of us are going to die, all right? I'm willing to die for this. You're the one being selfish. I don't believe it. After everything, you know that they killed my tribe, that they burnt my family because they had magic. We're going to bring magic back. Everyone on this godforsaken land's going to have magic. Then what? Can't burn everyone. I know that the Astral has a place for me. So if I die, I know that I'm coming back. Fuck you, Lenny. She goes for you. Can I grab her arm or try to from where I am? Would you? You've done enough damage. She pulls her arm away and she leaves. And you know, deep down, that whatever false promises the Astral has given to her, if she dies, she dies. There is no coming back from that. She has drunk too much of the Kool-Aid. And from that point forward, you never spoke. Though your neighbor might have attempted to bring you into conversation, <laughs> we shall see. Damn. <laughs> so much disappointment. Older, like. I know. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Oscar. <Wow. laughs> Please describe to us your character. I will. Um, Osgard Fairclough is a daemon. I was describing before as if like a dwarf and an elf like kind of smushed together with like the the physique of an elf but like the characteristics of a dwarf if that makes sense like the hair and like the the big nose and like still pointy ears wild hair but it has one long gray streak going it's kind of like up a bit then kind of zigzags and then goes up a little bit more <laughs> he's just like dirty <laughs> like he doesn't re- you can tell that he just doesn't really care about keeping clean in, in like he's in he's, he's he's in prison he just doesn't care no one's here to see him whatever dirt <laughs> <laughs> yes dirt <laughs> um he's just leaning up against uh, a back wall in the you said with a chain with a chain and just uh if there is a rock or something on the ground, just kind of like, even like a little, like a tiny little thing, just like flicking it up and like just kind of fidgeting a little bit, keeping, passing the time. You've had to pass time a lot whilst being here. You have seen every person in this area come and go, and you have remained. There are a couple of scratchings on the wall. It's it's frustrating because Osgar doesn't know it was like after a, like a week or two that he started like marking people that went by. So doesn't know how many people were before that, which is annoyed I didn't start right at the beginning, but it's made him feel pretty not great with the tally that's racking up so far. It's been a lot of people. A lot of enemies of the Blue Syndicate. When you learnt that 
this was the Blue Syndicate. Oi howdy, was that a impactful day for you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. You want to talk about it? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to dive into it. <laughs> so, about three or four months ago, you decided that you no longer wanted to work with them. But that was not the time that you discovered who they were, which makes it all the worse. How long do you think that you worked for the Blue Syndicate before you refused their evil doings? Why why are they evil, though? Like, like, Evil's a strong word. Um. Did you hear my backstory? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um. I think. Uh. I think a while. I think like at at least around a year. Okay. So we flash to the day that you learnt who they were. There was a middleman that hired you for years to tinker, to work on projects, would bring you research, particular things pertaining to soul energy, something that you found fascinating. Yes. And then they offered you a fuck ton of money, something that you needed. But of course that money wasn't just for me. (laughs) Money was getting sent back to my family. That is true. At least for that year. Yeah. And that justified it. Somewhat. You experimented with soul energy, blue powder, and projectiles. The combination of those three being a vastly deadly weapon. You never completed your experiments, but that does not mean that the Blue Syndicate does not have that research now. But after a year, your family passed away. And so, buying into the Blue Syndicate and their dealings was no longer worth it. Tell me, how did you try and leave the Blue Syndicate? Um, I think at first I genuinely just tried to walk away. Hmm. Um, because I feel like after that amount of time I had like my own little workshop or like place where they'd meet me at and where I, where they knew that I would do things and I probably knew that they were watching me and keeping an eye on me. So there was one day when I realized that, um, because my parents died of natural causes, you know, nothing sad or terrible backstory. They're just old. It happened. I got word. Um, and there was one day where I was just tinkering away with something and then not angrily, just kind of like threw him down a little bit and was like, like, why that? What? Why am I still doing this? And then just kind of turned around and walked out. You didn't get very far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were picked up by what I can only describe as a couple of goons and you were quickly brought to an interrogation room. A very mild one in comparison to the one down the hall. You had a lot of information and a lot of secrets that the Blue Syndicate did not want to get out. And so you are an asset. And you were asked by a very peculiar gentleman, one you'd never met before, with stark red skin and flowing pink hair, whether you would like to be an asset or an enemy. That's not much of a choice, is it? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? So it's all red skin and... Long pink hair. Um, I don't know that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, an, an asset or an enemy. There's nothing in the room except a chaise lounge that you're on and a very slightly higher chair that he sits on. Um, so I'm just I'm just sitting there then? Mm-hmm. 
I just give a little bit of a, a little bit of a, he asks him a little bit of a grunt like that. <laughs> well, that's not much of a choice, is it? Neither. <laughs> then you'll have a lot of angels. He snaps his finger and you feel as from the couch itself, these tendrils wrap around your limbs. And he walks forward holding a needle. I not wildly struggle, but try and like, you know, do that little, hmm. do I recognize what like, the needle? Is it like a particular color or anything or like? Roll me a medicine check. Okay. <laughs> look not great. Um, hey, get, get these bad ones out of the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, the backstories, it's, it's, it's going to happen anyway. It's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Within the needle is an inky black substance that isn't a very high medicine check, but you would still know what this is. It is uh, oblivion serum. In large doses, it can paralyze and kill. In small doses, it can knock you out for a couple how much of a dose does that look like? A lot. <laughs> but Okay. You do not know. You keep that keep that stuff away from me. You keep it do not don't you dare put that inside me. He smiles. Roll me a wisdom saving throw. That is a natural one. Oh my god, no. You're doing so great, guys. Keep up the good work. <laughs> oh my god. This man, unfamiliar to you, puts nothing but fear into your mind as he smiles Checks out. sweetly Ooh. as he injects the oblivion serum into your neck. Everything is going to be okay. And then, like, I, I try and say something, but then just like, <sighs> <sighs> and a few days later, you awoke in the cell, chained to the wall, and you know because you experimented on these chains and the obsidian bars of this dungeon that they suppress arcane. Your limbs were incredibly sore from not moving for several days as well. And you were severely de dehydrated and you had a headache when you first awoke. But other than that, they did not cause you any damage. And as with your compatriots that are in this with you right now, you have not been taken to the room and interrogated or tortured. You are the only four that have not been taken to that room. You hear this conversation across from you about being let out, knowing that you have been here the longest out of all of them. Is there anything that you would like to say to your newbies? I am, how would I put this, a little jaded by this point. Ah. Yeah, um, as you might expect. Yeah. Uh, so I just give a good old fashioned huh. Hello there. Hi. I'm Juby. Who are you? Yeah. I know your name, Juby. You've said it. Oh, sorry. I'm really tired. Have we had this conversation before? <sighs> Hello? Oh my god, again. He's not meant to be here. You don't say. Hello, he's not meant to be here. I'm not, I'm not lis <laughs> listen to Juby. I'm Damn not meant it. to be here. Where are the gods? If I could try and play them a little melody, maybe they'll come down. No, no, don't do that. Please, please, God, don't. Okay. Thank you. Are you okay? Yes, I'm just peachy. Thank you. That's good to know. You have no idea what a peach is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do I have any idea what a peach is? Peaches don't exist. 
What's another fruit that I could use? <laughs> you know what's funny? There is a juby. <laughs> <laughs> That's just juby. That's a juby melon. I am just juby. Oh, me too. <laughs> that was the jo- oh no. Oh, I think he's being sarcastic. Oh, Juby. All right, that down. Yep. Juby is a fruit. <laughs> and a flower. And oh. a flower. Lunella, please roll me an arcana check. Oh, my best roll. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> Save those rolls. Save those so I can roll yet. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. For the entire time that you've been here, you have been plotting. Every day. Crafting plan after plan in your head. That if the moment ever arose, you would know exactly what to do and who to take out on your way out. So it's at this moment in the chaos and the confusion of such a different experience that you notice something peculiar. The Basili bars and the shackle around your ankle, they pulse slightly. And as they do, you feel the connection to your magic. There's this moment where it feels like it's like you're able to tap into it. For half a minute. What would you like to do? Oh, I was... <laughs> this is ridiculous, but I think. Oh, we love ridiculous. <laughs> so I would say she's been like kind of staring at her background. And you see all of a sudden she walks a little bit closer and stop and just cast magic on herself. So, oh. Perfect. That makes a lot of sense. Magic Missile is a direct hit. You know what, in this condition that the bars are in, please just roll 1d4. I think it should probably be enough. <laughs> That's a 1. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> luckily, there's three Magic Missiles, I believe, that hit. So roll two more. Whew. That's a 3. Okay. A 3. Okay with seven points of damage to the Sicilian bars. And from what you all see, sparks fly against the bars and spark into your area. Oh! But the Sicilian powers down and your gate falls over and so does yours. Is my shackle still on? Your shackle is still on. How did you, how did you do that? That was amazing. How did, how did you do that? I'm looking around to get these shackles off. Okay. This is meant to be impenetrable. Can you get the shackles off? Uh, uh, I mean, I uh, think back to my days of like helping design, like put stuff together. Because mm -hmm. I never bothered before, because if the bars are still off, there's no point. I look for like the, the, the join that's. Um, like where you, you know, attach it together mm -hmm. and think back to know if I can think of any particular way to like wedge something in there where if like a, you know what I mean? Like what would help best to get it undone? Roll me Arcana. Not terrible, but, oh, that's good. That'd be a 21. Oh, okay. Yes. You haven't- Safe in those good rolls. <laughs> you haven't thought about it until this very moment, but you know a weak spot in this build based on the metal itself. If it was a solid piece of metal, this would be have been welded with the magic itself. This has a joining point, which means that there's a point in this where the magic doesn't exist. And you can tap into that and snap it off, but it is going to require you a strength check. I will roll a strength check. Go for it. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is my opportunity. 12. It partially snaps and you're able to wiggle your foot, your ankle out of this. You do scrape up some of your skin as you do so and you are now bleeding onto the rock. Ow. Nefario, why did you do that? I, please, can you, can you, can I try to cast something having watched that? You can certainly try. Well, I, I, after that as well, I immediately run over. Actually, no, I go to you first, you're closer. Yeah, sorry. 
Yeah, then I'm 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 not gonna wait. I'm gonna okay. uh, t- see that. Take in the fact that that happened and how that happened. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Step back, and I'm just gonna and I'm gonna use sacred flame uh, on the chains. I don't know if it'll smash it or burn it, but I'm gonna try. I'll give you an option here. Okay. You can either tell me how you reach out to the gods for this ability in this moment. Okay. Or you can roll me a religion roll and hope for the best. Uh, I... I will see this. There is this rush of um, uncertainty and almost hope in this moment, and I will kind of under my breath just... Abanox, I am lost. Please give me your guidance. And that is what I will ask. Perfect. For my freedom. Sun does not shine here. But this is definitely a city for the lost. And Abanox comes through as you reach your hand out, you snap your fingers, a sacred flame bursts against the bars. Uh, Please describe to me what your sacred flame looks like. Uh, I imagine, if you'd imagine, it's just sort of like a combustion of flame, but it is radiant and light and almost like shimmeringly golden. (laughs) Um, Just smashing against the bars, I will attempt to get Juby out if Mm -hmm. they're connected. But Uh, I am just prioritizing myself. Yeah, there's there's a cell between you, but you that is your next attempt. As you watch uh, from your side of this area as well the sacred flame hits the bars and you hear a distinctive sound that only you would understand the the frequency of magic you hear it almost power off and you look down at the shackle on this woman's ankle and the magic is on from that too whatever's happening outside of this has now made its way here. This is bigger than just you getting out of some jail cells. Something is wrong outside of this building. You're able to get to Judy. How wide are the cell, the bars? <laughs> you could have just looked through the whole time. <laughs> I didn't know we could leave. That's too funny not to go with. Um, yeah, they're there. I think they're about they're about that. You could probably get through. So open that. I would have like, probably contorted to be a bit thinner, but just didn't leave because it seemed rude. <laughs> and do we all just like stare at Juby like? Juby, seriously? Yeah. We need to go. I need to leave. We need to go. Yeah, we need to get a Thario stuff. Do you want your stuff? I need my stuff. I need oh, my no. stuff. Uh, let's go. There more people here. Not in these cells. Um, There's one body. They are no longer living. I'm not really prioritizing hellos and thank yous and ha- who are you and whatnot. I'm There's sort no of. To. I've heard that and I'm looking for where my stuff might be. Okay. Wait. Wait a second. The because I'm just assuming the other direction is the. Uh, the torture interrogation room or whatever? The only way out and the only way in is the torture investigation. Oh, okay, great. Then I go, yeah. Forget I said wait, it's the only door. Never mind. Um, <laughs> you say, I, no! <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, as we're moving, um, Lunella will cast Mage Armor on herself okay. as well. Oh, nice. It's a good idea for you. <laughs> okay, you get to the large metal door that leads into the torture room. It opens. I was so certain you'd be like, it's locked. Not at all. (laughs) Juby just slides through the cracks. (laughs) But as soon as you open this thick metal door, you hear some very disturbing sounds and you've heard some devastating stuff in this place. You hear screaming and the sound of fire. I don't like either of those noises. No. Me neither, Juby. Something hits you. If they were to 
pull off what they were trying to do, what you tried to stop, the first thing that they would do is get rid of any evidence. And unfortunately, this particular space where you were in would be collateral damage. Wherever you're heading, it's probably into that fray. But if you could save some of the evidence to prove that they were behind it, you could take it to someone high up. There's a book that Lunella has hidden. Mm -hmm. Would that, I think that would have been part of her plotting of when, okay. So would, would I have some kind of insight as to where to go? You don't know how to get down to where you've been locked up. Okay. But once you get up to familiar territory, you would know how to make your way to the research center that you've burned down, partially burned down, or even the accommodation that you and the the others of your kind lived. Would I assume from this that this means Val went through with it? Most likely. You hear the sounds of fire and screaming. Oh, merciful gods! <laughs> uh, I, I go immediately towards uh, like a torture desk or whatever it is, and try and pick up any kind of thing that I could use as a weapon. There's a lot of different things that you could choose from. Some, some spiky and sharp. You collect a lot of spiky and sharp things. Just one for each hand. Okay, perfect. I will also defend myself. Okay, what would you like to grab? mace of some kind yeah. or yeah sure. something with spikes i will like just <laughs> kind of like wipe it off real quick and then uh, okay i'll pick up a mace but i'm holding it like by the middle of it i'm like roll me a strength check i leave my dirt <laughs> that's disgusting four you try and pick it up with <laughs> A, you're in a banthame that aren't very strong beings, and B, you haven't seen sunlight in several days, so you do not have the strength. Okay. I don't. I don't entirely uh, know your circumstances or who you even are. I know, uh, Juby. Yes, Juby. Um, or how you do what you do, but I need to get out, and I. It seems you two too. So maybe we could help each other. Yeah, buddy, I think we all need to Fantastic. Get out, so Lead the way, because that let's... looks dangerous. Are there, are there multiple doors from the torture room, or did, again, just one? Again, just one. Cool. Let's go. Uh, agreed. Let's go. Okay. Yeah? Towards the door. Okay. I'll just note the silence, but... This door is locked. <laughs> Lunella didn't say that. That was me. <laughs> oh, well, in that case... <laughs> fuck. <laughs> um, key. I need a, a, a key. Sma hit it down. Break it. I, I uh, uh, is, Does my spiky thing look like it might fit in the lock? There is no lock. Uh -huh. Do we still have our magic? Get out of the way. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do it. Just... <laughs> I, yeah, I sh <sighs> step back. I throw another magic missile. Okay. You get right back as far as you can, as three potent missiles launch towards this door. Uh, it's maybe a bad decision. <laughs> what do they look like to you? I think they just, like, almost are like this green, um, or it should be this, like, green, almost, like, it glows like her eyes do, mm -hmm. but you kind of can't really look at it. It's too bright for most people. But there's, like, a white, almost arrow look shape in the, in, in the middle and then the glow like kind of outlines it and then she just kind of like throws it it's okay. like like she's getting ready to she's not very strong but it's, it's magic it's fine and like she like throws it as if she's actually throwing an arrow or something and it's just, cool. nice roll three uh d4 i hope i didn't just kill my poor squishy wizard a four? I'm really nervous now because it's a door. I'm standing You're good. really. It's a door. No, but I'm standing really close to it. 
One. And three. So eight. Eight. You throw these piercing light arrows that sort of glow a green the same way your eyes do. And they spike into the door and you hear the latch fall off on the other side. It was connected with sort of a bar. You had been deadlocked, like bolted into this space. Whoa. You can now reach your hand through the hole that your magic missiles made and heave it up. That was amazing. Oh. I'm gonna do that. The door. <laughs> oh, <thanks. clears throat> well done. The hallway facing you is dark. The screams and the sound of fire are above you. How? Anyone with dark vision can see. Uh, I have dark vision mm-hmm. on me too. Okay. <laughs> go, 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 I think go, you go all team. have dark vision. Do I? You have dark vision as well. Okay. Well, that's that's <laughs> less fun. There's three daemons in an anthem. You all have dark vision. So, which way do you head? Left, right. Well, I was going to say forwards, but no, that's not an option. So I don't know this space yet. No. Yeah, because we just woke up in there, didn't we? Uh, I did. will. Uh, again, a, a quick silent prayer, and I will uh, cantrip light onto my mace. Who are you praying to? I will. Abanox has served me in this moment, and I'm still lost. So I will, I will pray to him to, to help us once more. Guide the way. Okay. <laughs> Lights. So, why do I imagine the wand from uh, from Harry Potter? That was a very I Harry saw! Potter sound. I yeah. I, uh, yeah. Loop the loop over the yeah, yeah. 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 There's other things to focus on, but I'm witnessing these other kinds of magic and there's almost this like moment of like this is what it should look like <laughs> okay. as as i as i then as i then stand ready for them to lead the way yeah. so i'm just gonna it. hold out the dagger and just like look at you and i do not i look away she's gonna cast light <laughs> on the dagger <laughs> but it is <laughs> is it like pulsing green yeah it's nice. like a flame and there's like it, it just, it looks angry. Is that all I can describe it? You know when you like spoke of fire, it looks very uncontrollable. An angry green flame dagger. <laughs> yeah. That sounds holy. A little I'll bit just, demonic, just look at my pretty magic. You know what? <laughs> oh, I pull out my spike thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, uh, in, a, in, 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 this, in this dick swinging contest, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, pull it out and do the same thing. Light, cast light. <laughs> what does yours look like? like? Yeah. Um, mine is uh more of like a like a blue hue, not to like black light or like to make it not easy to see, but it's like more of that. Like these lights behind you? Yeah, a little bit more white than that, but that's yeah. more of a more of a vibe. Perfect. You guys are all so talented. I take out my dagger, fumble it a bit, <laughs> <laughs> pick it back up. Like, okay, I think we should get out of here. Yes. Oh, there we go. <gasps> it's cool. on the right side. It's not very radiant. Mm. Oh, <laughs> that's definitely because not. Because you're worth it. Well, after you. Oh. Before. Well, the burning I, I, I look down at the ground and try and see if there's a, a track with more footsteps going either way from where we are. Like, I don't, is it dirt or something on the ground? Is it like, are we in like a concrete thing? Can I see footsteps in the dust? That kind of. Survival oh. check. Survival check? Yes, please. You're trying to track, or you can also do perception if you want to do. Not investigation. Um, <laughs> no, I won't. Well, that's still a 15, which is not too good. Okay, with a 15, there are barely any tracks in the ground. The ground itself is hardened and sort of molded this way. Mm-hmm. The walls themselves are still the blackened stone that you know to be the Lost City of Nabu. Neither way looks more well traveled, but with a survival check of 15. There's more screams coming from the right. Let's go away from the screams. Um, y- yes, I'm, I'm just spitballing. Does anyone know a, a, a way out of here? I didn't see the coming in part. Neither. Yeah, I just start walking then after that, away from the screams. The I will way. follow. Okay, you head left. 
This winding path begins to lead up. Eventually, the slope becomes steps. And you still don't see people. No guards, no assholes, nothing. And you make your way up to the next level. You realize that if they are destroying evidence or removing themselves from the lost city of Naboo, there has to be something else. There has to be a cover story. And the moment you think that, you begin to hear a low growl. You realize that they have made this look like an attack rather than themselves. What do you do? Do I hear the growls coming from them? Roll me an investigation. Goddess of Secrets, Aiden, guide us through your shadows, and I will just hold my hand out and cast guidance. Nat 20. <sighs> nice. You recognize this growl. The archaeologists that uncover many an ancient artifact have told you stories of these things. These many-legged insectoid beasts. Sorry, that was me, not Lunella. <laughs> that tunnel through the ground of this area. From what you're hearing, it is not out in the open yet. It's still in the walls. And you have time to run. What, what, what's happening? Do I know what it what it's called? Or you don't know the actual scientific name of these beasts, um, but you know these to be howlers. Um, Lunella just kind of like stops as she hears the growl and like, what's what's wrong? You have to run. No, just run. Run. She's gonna leg it. She's just gonna run. She says, "Run, I'm running." We're running. Yep. Okay. You begin to run at a fast pace. The four of you following each other. Who's in the lead? I mean, I probably started, but I'm not very (laughs) fit. They probably take over pretty quick. Um, What what, what are our speeds? Thirty. Oh, twenty-five. Thirty. Great. I don't know if I'd be the fastest, but I'd definitely be running as fast as I can. I'm probably lagging behind because I'm so tired. I think given how long these two have been in there and how lethargic Juby is, you are probably the fastest. I'm at the front. So, as you are charging forward and the three of you are following after... I'm right behind you. You hear the settling of a large creature above you. And you can hear it moving around you and realize that it's not just one. Oh, merciful gods. Or at least it's long enough oh. to camouflage itself as two. Oh. You continue running. Do we all hear that or just him? You all hear that as you're moving. You're Great. moving sort of underneath it. As you're running, the ground itself, you're making noise. And you breathe as you hear the scuttling again that it starts to follow you. Oh, it crawls. Oh, thoughts. So. You have a moment of a split decision here. Keep running, or stop and hide until it has left. Are there any doors around or anything, or is it just a corridor? There is a corridor, there's several doors leading to different areas. You still don't recognize it, but there is one door up ahead that has the symbol of a kitchen, sort of like the runic symbol of food. I'm how far away? 30 feet ahead. But do we know this about howlers as well, or is it? You would know what a howler is. Okay. These two wouldn't. Hey, spooky scuttling. I think I would probably stop and say, hi. Yeah, and I'm going to run and find somewhere behind a door or something. As you say that, you hear the burst of rock behind you. Shit. <laughs> and you hear, you don't see because it happened behind you, as something large seemed to go through one wall and exit out the other. Oh. The holes that it creates in the two walls begin to howl as air passes between them. You hear the deafening. That's how they get the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> Is it still tracking us? <sighs> You run towards the kitchen? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to run towards the kitchen and try and jump, like, off the ground. If, I get, if there's, like, you know in the kitchens, I know this is modern kitchen, but they have, like, a shelf and then the table. Mm-hmm. If there's, like, any kind of shelf or any shelf around, I want to, like, just not 
throw to make too much noise, but if I can throw myself up in like a shelf, so I'm off the ground, off the walls. All right. Where are the rest of you going? Jeez. I am not meant to be here. I, 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 am, I can't, if I can't die here, I will trust in these randoms and follow into the kitchen. <laughs> okay, you follow into the kitchen. I do the same, uh, thinking that that's the thing to do. If I don't hide, I'm also going to put it out as a light. Okay. Is there yeah. a window with a curtain that I can hide behind? If you're it's underground, there's no the windows. Any kind of cupboard or anywhere that I would fit. You're very small and lean. You could probably fit yourself into anything. I do want to see, like, if I have time to do this, I might not, but I want to see if I can find a spot where I can still see the door. The door. Okay. Roll me an investigation check. Three of you are hiding. Mm -hmm. Just like a, a, a scared, a scared <laughs> person on the top of the table that's seen a mouse. Just. Okay. Yep. I also see you put your light out, and I, I don't put it out, but I just. Uh, in my. Yeah. Sorry. To counter that, uh, Nat 20. Uh, you fail. cannot find a place that you can still see the door. Uh, there is a table. You get onto the table with Nathariel. <laughs> and you all. That was Lunetta. <laughs> you all have a moment where you hold your breath. Off the ground, not causing any tremors, you hope to gods that these things pass you and they don't hunt you down as food. You hear another couple of bursts through the wall, making its way up the corridor, the howling getting more intense as more of these airways are created and it stops. And you hear it further down in the distance. It has found a new group to track down. It's going up in the cupboard. Guys. Guys. I slowly step out of the cupboard. Like very exaggerated. Can, can, can we hear it anymore? You can't hear the beasts. Okay. Otherwise it's gonna be like. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I was like, why are you pretty dead? Uh, Lunella just slowly gets off the table and starts walking. Okay. Like, you guys are doing this, she's like... I just... <laughs> 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 See so you going and... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Stealthing? Yeah. First stealth. Stealth tracks. Oh, Jesus. Not wearing armor. <laughs> Ten. Nice. Thirteen. <laughs> Do you want me to disadvantage because I'm tired? Do I want to be that mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you helping? <laughs> Uh, 11. Okay. <clears throat> 11. Okay. It's not too bad because you are so light of foot that mm -hmm. stealthing is sort of natural for an abandonment anyway. But the four of you proceed down this corridor past the doors. The howling still in the area from all of these airways that this thing, things are making. And you continue to climb. And then you hear the fire in the distance. But you now recognize relatively where you are and you know how to skirt the area and maybe get to a safe spot to regroup. But your things and their things would likely be in the center of this building. Yeah. And do I have an, any type of idea of what kind of, like obviously we want to be as quick as we can, mm -hmm. but do I have an inkling to like, do we have time to go and get our things? Or is that, are we, <laughs> is it like, get out now? Things can be replaced. We have to get Nathariel's things. And I mean, I know I want to get my stuff, but. Roll me a wisdom saving then. Yeah. <laughs> and this burst. <laughs> okay, it's all right. Um, you didn't have any things. Okay, it's 22. Okay. And I might know. 
as illogical as it is to go after things at this moment, you do have enough time to get the stuff and get out. You do not have a lot of time for sightseeing, though. Any stops on this road could lead to the four of you being killed very quickly. I, my book, I, I have to get my book. You can exit that way. She could walk. Her things will be that way. I, I am going to get my things. Let's go. Are you, so you're going by yourself? I do. I will come with if this is important to you. I'm getting you. my stuff as well. Are you, you getting your stuff? Yeah, is your book in somewhere else? Is that what you meant? No, I'm saying if you want to go, the exit's that way, and you can get out. Let's get our stuff. Let's get yeah, our stuff. Let's get... Okay, you head towards the room in the center of this building. This is sort of like a barracks. It's where the quote-unquote guards would be living and stationed. The types of blue syndicate members that would kill for money, assassins, that sort of thing. And in the center, sort of behind what is the equivalent of a receptionist desk is a storage room where they would stash the things that they take from others on their jobs or people that they throw into prison. It is locked, but the key is on the desk. And the four of you quickly open the door and enter into this space. I will need you all to roll investigation checks because there is far more stuff in here than just your (gasps) stuff. (laughs) Hey. <laughs> How much can I if utilize Abanox? Up to you. <laughs> 24. 24, nice. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> 19. Mm-hmm. 13. 13, okay. Nine. <laughs> Nine. Okay. <laughs> yes. Because uh, I don't actually have that much stuff while I'm looking. If like if there's anything else fun that we see along the way, okay, sure. Just, you know. With your high roll, mm-hmm. I'll give you that. I'll also be looking if I can um, to see if there's anything I spot that might have been Val's. Oh, okay. Yes. I have no stuff, and everything you knew would find. That is very very yeah. true. <laughs> um, there are some very That's interesting so things. You've never seen armor before, so that's fun. Um, and you spot this incredibly shiny set of armor uh, that has a sun <laughs> in it. Before, mm. yeah. do you point it out? Yeah, I point it out. Look, it's the sun. Mine. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look very nice in you. I just give you a hug, no. and then I go, "Thank you." And then oh. as I do that, as I've turned away from him, go like. <laughs> Grab it. Okay. You adorn your armor as quickly as you can, which is not very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Usually later. other people put you into your armor, so this is It's de- like the shoulder pads are on the wrong way yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's very hard to do the straps yourself, you've realized. Well, why would someone do it themselves? Yeah. With a twenty-four, you find a few different things in this room that are magical items. You can immediately spot them. You find um, a spell book of someone. Mine? Yeah, you can take Mine it. Mine now. <laughs> yeah. You find a wand. You also find a medallion. Those three items are potently magical to you. They are registering strong elements of magic. You with a 19, is that correct? Mm-hmm. So you find your belongings, anything that you had on you at the time, tech. Uh, but you also find a canister of a projectile soul bullet. It is not placed into the item that would shoot this thing, but you find it, which is not a good sign. Mm -hmm. You, with (laughs) Juby's help, find some of your stuff, including but not limited to the letter that you wrote to Ruby. Uh, Yeah, things from my family and whatnot. You also find, with Juby's help, something interesting. A letter that is written in your father's handwriting. Is that not important to you? Uh, I don't know, Juby. That's 
I feel the film is in when it's here. I'm gonna grab it. Mm. Pocket it. Okay. So many letters I, I want to know about. <laughs> I can help you read it if you want. I'm very good at reading. Thank, thank you. Um, maybe when we, we get out of here. Yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, you grab your things and you begin to make your way out. I'm gonna leave a note just scratched into the receptionist's desk. Okay. You are not very good at your jobs. Ethereal wasn't meant to be here. Oh and my god. Then like a stab a daughter. Perfect. Um, love him. So was this including looking for Val? There is nothing of Val's in here. You can decipher based on the idea that they are destroying the stuff now. The event that Val was at was today. Okay. She's in a different region, if that's the case. Or even dead. You make your way out as fast as you can through the exit, sticking to the shadows, still with those stealth rolls, being able to get out of this particular building. You are still beyond the Veiled Tapestry District in an area known to be Blue Syndicate Headquarters. You would know that. You now know that it's part of the Blue Syndicate, but you know where the Astral would be, and you know where your room would be, where you have stashed this tome. You may have limited time before other buildings of the Blue Syndicate would be taken out as evidence. Do you go towards the building? Oh, damn it. Um, everything in Lanella is like, go, but also it's, it's she's too calculated. She's, it's not smart, so. I have a book that I need to get, but it's it's dangerous to get to it. Will you help me? This book is important to you. Of course we'll help you. Uh, I cannot refuse someone asking for help. Uh. All right, positive pants. What is so important about this book? That's up to you. These people were in the same place that you were, mm. locked up by the Blue Syndicate. They might also want revenge. Um, it's, I guess, evidence that they try and destroy. So, if if we get it, destroy what? Evidence against the Blue Syndicate. Oh. Fuck it, I'm in. I cannot ignore your your plea for help. Yes, I will help. I didn't understand anything of what you said, but you seem like a good person. I want to help. That hurts a little. <laughs> she doesn't show it, but like that's a pain. Um, all right, let's. Okay. As you make your way outside of this building and you see the devastation caused to part of the Lost Haven Blue, you can see the flames, you can see the destruction of rock that you know the Howlers have done. You see bodies of innocent people that might have been in this area at the time. That's sad. And you make your way further out of this particular zone towards where the Astral would have given you accommodation in the nicer parts of the Lost Haven of it. As you do so, you spot a couple of Blue Syndicate members. You kind of keep yourself out of visibility. You see something else interesting to the four of you. Um, a pink arrow goes flying, hits one of these Blue Syndicate members in the back, and you see a bubble of what looks like soft, foamy spider web sort of encase the body. The arrow itself marked with a V, not Val, um, but everyone else roll me a history check. 
Lots of advantage Wait, because. Sure. Yeah. Twenty-one. Oh. Five. Fourteen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that is thirteen. Okay. You would not know what this is. The Astral would definitely not have taught you this. But with a high number such as yourself, this is an arrow of a member of the Ventrium. The Ventrium being a strategic strike force that try and save uh, kidnapped ethods from being sold and taken um, by hunters for, for nefarious purposes and or recently the blue syndicates objectives um i immediately stop okay and try to work out where like see if i can see something where it's come from okay perception check for me or i guess this would be investigation angles yeah investigation 22 22 you can spot it it's from one of the higher up buildings in the Lost of Navu. The buildings themselves were an ancient city from long before that has been revealed after a large earthquake opened up this chasm. So, what looks like these marbled and white stone pillars carved are encased into black stone, sort of revealed. And archaeologists have gone into this chasm and slowly start to, to dig out the city itself. There are tapestries and banners. <coughs> Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Stop I tried hoping you did. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> there are tapestries and banners that are sort of swinging and hanging from either side of this. And further down into the center of the chasm, there is a large hourglass that spins and flips on the hour. And there is a, an individual, a female Leonid, very pale but with pinkish qualities and elements to them on the hourglass with a bow and arrow. That distance is insane that they were able to achieve that. And just as quick, they (laughs) flutter off using their six wings out of sight. I I, I keep moving and, um, because we all saw the arrow hit the Mm -hmm. person, right? Yeah. Um, how far was it ish? Just so I can. 300 feet. Whew. That's a shot. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that, uh, that shot came from 300 feet off. That's a long distance. Yeah, very long distance. Exactly what we should be from this city. A very long distance. <clears throat> so let's keep going and keep your eye out for something. Uh, for at least. Mm-hmm you know, really good shot with an arrow because they might be useful to help us get out of here. Obviously, we're on the same side, gesturing towards the um, the person with the pink spider webby thing. <laughs> right? I guess if I lose the bad guys, pink will be the good guys, right? That, sure. That makes sense. Yeah. Your book? Yeah. Let's, let's go. Okay, you continue on. The city looks dire. People have cleared out of this area and the Veiled Tapestry District that you go through, usually a hub spot for sin, as best to put it. Scandals is empty and it's almost haunting as you travel through it. The tapestries that you could hide behind and get up to your nefarious deeds have no one hiding in the crevices and corners of this area. You make your way through it and you head to the building that the Astral would have been living in and it is cleaned out. But you hear a noise. Like armed soldiers. The sound of metal clanging and a tussle, a a, a tussle of some kind off to the side. You get into the building as fast as you can. You know you're being spotted by the Blue Syndicate. It's not a good idea right now. They think you're dead. Or they must think you're dead. You don't know for certain. You get into the building and you shut the door. You can hear what sounds like the Matraven guards fighting people. More howlers off in the distance. This seems incredibly strange and roomy. 
partially out of the, not even out of the Lost City of Nauvoo, you're only partially out of the districts of Nauvoo that crime would be happening in. There's a whole city to escape from. You shut the door and you have a moment where you can go and explore the book and the three of you are left in a hallway that is decorated like a home. There are pictures on the walls of mostly female children in different age groups that have been raised in these halls like an orphanage and yet not one. Um, roll me a an insight check for the three of you, please. And for yourself an investigation to go find your book. What did you say, so it's insight? Insight. 19. 19. 19. 14. Okay. Special. <laughs> special. I'm a special boy too. You've heard horror stories in the tribes mm -hmm. of people who have stolen effed children away and raised them in families that are false like like a cult or a fake tribe not in the ways of the effort and this was a children's tale that they would tell and as you look at these photos of these girls mostly there's a pattern to them they all seem to be either Damon Leonid or Avanthame and they all have qualities to them that you can tell they have magic. These are groupings of ethered children who have been taken and raised in this space. This one that you just told us. This place is horrible. And you would create this there's stories in my tribe of children who will be kidnapped and stolen. Stolen and raised in false families, fake communities. Children who possess magical abilities will be kidnapped. Mm. To anyone who possesses magic and never reveals it to outsiders. Well, they're just stories. That is no life for a child, regardless of their capabilities. It's at this moment that the three of you realize that the woman that you were with, she had you here, mm -hmm. and she is also in these photos, in these pictures. It's her. The poor thing, this might have happened to her. You retrieve your book. With a 19 hidden in the floorboards, a tome from the great city of Elzabar, written in a language long forgotten that only you have been able to translate. But also from this tome itself, been able to access magic that the great city of Elzabar was able to access and have now unintentionally provided to the Blue Syndicate. And you have a moment where you stare at this item. You could destroy it, or you could take it as evidence, or you could continue to hide it. What do you think you want to do in this moment? Is there any sense that this there's more that I haven't figured out from this. Yes. The second half of this tome has not been deciphered. <sighs> Do I think if I can figure it out, it would potentially be useful for revenge? Not only would it be useful for revenge, but it might be able to stop 
whatever this ritual is that the Blue Syndicate is conducting. Only you and this time and maybe the friends outside could do that, could stop it. Are there any bags or anything in the, in the room? Every other gone? item has been taken. Okay. I'm going to take a look and I'm going to keep it. Okay. You return to your friends downstairs. This aura of sadness, solemn contemplation. What are the three of you thinking right now? In this moment? Um that just that this is messed up and regretting most of the choices I've made that have up to this point and helping these people in any way. Nathariel? There is a mix of thought. I'm thinking about Ruby. I'm thinking about my little sister. I'm thinking about my mum. I'm feeling conflicted about all the things I've been told about magic users and how I should feel about them and this place and these people that I've met and yet selfishly all I can think about is my father's handwriting Do you take out the letter? Yeah, if there's a moment There is? Yeah You unfold it? I won't attempt to hide it from you Mm. but you probably see that I look nervous about reading it. I'm not hiding it from you, but I'm not necessarily like going, hey, read this with me. <laughs> I'll just sort of have to mind, put a hand on your shoulder and just like feel a squeeze, even though you wouldn't even feel it through the armor. Yeah, I don't clock it. The first half of the letter mm-hmm. seems to be a reply to the high priest. It reads, you're right, there is more to the boy. Do what you must. The second half of the letter is an order by the High Priest of Questfell to send you to the Lost City of Nabu into the hands of the Blue Syndicate so that you will never be found out. Your father's signature is at the bottom of this letter. And lastly, Judy, what are you thinking in this moment? I feel an overwhelming feeling of sadness towards this woman whose name I haven't even gotten yet. And now to Nathaniel and to all the girls in the photos. And I want to help both of them. And I really want to hurt whoever did this to both of them. But I don't know how. I've never hurt anyone. It's the first time I've wanted to. And it feels so alone and far from home. And out of place. I'm just sitting in the sadness. Okay. Well now, you return to the book and you have a moment to pitch or ask these three for help. You have a list of names of people that you have repeated in your head to take down. You have evidence, and these three might have things that you don't know. Lunella. <clears throat> That's my name. Um, I, I would like to destroy the Blue Syndicate. It, would, you, would you like to join me? Toby, I don't know how I can help, but I'll do the best I can. Nathario, I swore an oath to honor and protect this realm and its creations. These people oppose that. I will help you however I can. Oscar. Yeah. 
Fuck. Fuck. That's gonna fuck some shit up. And that is where we're gonna end tonight's episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for this first dive into a story outside of the unmarked. I'm excited to see where this little chapter continues because boy howdy is that a lot of information for one episode. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Most important bit of information. Juvie. Oh my gosh. We love Juvie. Love Juvie. Love Juvie. <laughs> Thank you so much to our sponsors for this episode, Sphinx Stationery and the Ravens Ridge Emporium. Ah. <laughs> Thanks for my net 20s. Net 20. No. Oh, same! Oh, what? Go get your can dice. We, can we carry them over? Damn! No. <laughs> <laughs> but until we continue the story, we will see you next Tuesday. Ciao. Bye. Toodles. <laughs> that was so fun. <laughs>